Hi everybody, I saw The Hate You Give. So going to see The Hate You Give was like a whole event for Angel and I, not only because we're big fans of the book by Angie Thomas, but also because Regal was like having a night. We bought tickets early to go to an early screening of the movie because it doesn't come out until the 19th, but we saw it on the 11th. And um, apparently like Regal wasn't prepared for it. We spent pretty much four hours in the movie theater and at least an hour and a half of that was just looking at each other instead of at the movie. So we were early, not super early or anything, but early enough. The movie time came around, and the movie hadn't started. 20 minutes passed, and the movie still hadn't started. 30 minutes passed, no movie. An employee comes in and tells us that they're having technical difficulties and that we can either get a voucher or our money back. And I was being stubborn and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to see if the movie would just start. So we just waited. And an hour after the movie was supposed to start, it finally does. We get like, just about two hours into the movie. The video keeps playing, but the audio isn't playing anymore. And the lights in the theater came on and the screen started closing in. And we're just sitting there. We're not the only ones in this theater, by the way. We're just sitting there for like 15 minutes trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Uh, probably like 15 or maybe 20 minutes after this happens, the movie finally restarts. Angel and I have seen the very opening scene to The Hate You Give twice in the same night. They were, I guess, trying to fast forward for us because we were two hours into this movie. So they kept getting to certain points and it would just play the movie and then they had to stop it and try to figure out where we were. They got to about 15 minutes earlier than where we had left off. So we had to watch those scenes again. That being said, the movie was completely worth it. I don't regret staying for the movie though. Do you? No. How many times did you say I cried, Angel? Oh my gosh, did you stop? I don't think I did. This book is so long and so much happens in it that it already felt pretty cinematic. And so the fact that it's a movie felt very natural. It seems like the book was supposed to be a movie to begin with. So if you haven't read The Hate You Give, you definitely should. It is about a young girl named Star Carter who witnesses the death of her friend and then deals with the backlash of being a witness to the death of a young black man. And of course they touch on police brutality and justice for black lives. And I think this is probably the first like book to movie adaptation that I felt all of the changes were more or less justifiable. The whole cast was phenomenal. I really wanted a darker skinned actress than Amanda Stenberg for the part of Star. That being said, I think Amanda did an amazing job. She pretty much pulled all the stops with Star. Not that I made that choice, but I don't regret that she played Star. The guy who plays Archie on Riverdale, AJ? KJ. KJ. He plays Star's boyfriend. I thought he was really great. So Regina Hall plays Linda, Star's mother, and she was phenomenal. Russell Hornsby played Maverick, Star's dad, and he was above and beyond. The movie really focuses a lot more on Maverick and Star's relationship than the book does, although there is a very heavy presence of that relationship in the book as well. So many things happen and Maverick is there to really not only justify them for Star, but to help her make sense of them and to help her come to terms with her decisions. It just felt so important and so necessary. Anthony Mackie played King, who is Maverick's former employer. We'll go with that. If you've read the book, you know who King is. He brought a very like eerily quiet air to King. Issa Rae plays April Ofra, who is a lawyer, but runs this nonprofit that speaks up and supports especially black communities when things like br police brutality shake the community. I didn't really know what to expect out of the character for the movie or Issa Rae's, because I really just haven't seen anything that she's been in, and I know that's a travesty. I'll get on it. <laughs> I loved her in it. Common plays stars Uncle Carlos, who is also a police officer, and what they do in the movie that they don't do in the book was eye-opening and sad to watch. Not sad in like a pathetic way, but like sad in a heartbreaking way. Something that I would have liked to have seen more of in the movie that's definitely very present in the book is Star's relationship with her friends at the school that she goes to. It's there in the movie, but it's really only like half there compared to what's in the book. I wish there was more of Star's brothers in the movie, but that's really like my only complaint. And it's really just because I liked 
the relationship that we got with them, and I also liked them in the book, and I just wanted more of that in the movie. But you know, this movie that was directed by a black man and features mostly a black cast and was written originally by a black woman, it's very clear that this is a black story. I've been really excited for this movie for a long time, especially like as I got to see Angie not only be excited about it, but like openly weeping on Instagram about it as she was sitting in the theater watching it. I'm not surprised that I was crying. I'm surprised that Angel didn't cry, knowing what happens to Khalil at the very beginning of the book. I really wasn't ready for it in the movie, and it still happened, and it shook me, and I think it may have shaken me harder than it does in the book, and I don't really have words to say why I think that. It just did. Maybe because I was seeing it rather than just imagining it, but because I was looking right at it, like I jumped when it happened. A little itty bitty details in this movie that tie Star to her friends Khalil and Natasha absolutely broke me. It's not something that's in the book. The fact that she has a physical manifestation of what their friendship was, like, I'm crying thinking about it. The whole point of the book and the movie is for Star not only to deal with the death that she witnessed, but also to learn that she can take the time to preserve herself, especially because she knows she's gonna be targeted as the witness to this murder, but also when the right time to use her voice and speak up is. As a white woman reading this book and watching this movie, I recognize that it's not necessarily something that is going to 100% you know, hone in with me. Like, it's not about my experience, though. But watching that character grow and learn these things that I knew she was going to because I've read the book was just amazing. I'm really glad that this movie was made. I'm really glad that it was made now. I think those are pretty much all of the thoughts that I can give that are not spoilers because the movie's not even out yet, so I didn't want to spoil pretty much anything. So if you like this video, please click the bell below so you don't miss any of our future videos. If you're not already subscribed to The Princess and the Scrivener, please do so down below as well, especially if you'd like to see more videos on Disney, intersectional feminism, pop culture critiques, and more. One of us will see you real soon.